Hi, this is part 2 of me ranking every single scratch block. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, I strongly recommend you watch it first. There's a link in the description. Let's get right back into the list. Starting with... 80. The one thing is greater than hat block. This block doesn't seem too useful at first, since at face value all it does is start when the timer or loudness is greater than a certain number. But it has one unique use. It can be used to create custom hat blocks like this, where you put in a boolean and the block will trigger when the condition is true. 79. The thing contains thing boolean. This block can be very helpful for more technical projects. For example, you can use it instead of nested if loops when a variable can be one of several values. 78. Username. While it only has one specific use, this block is used all the time so I'm putting it fairly high on the list. 77. Point tours. It's not as helpful as the point and direction block, but I have it in a lot of projects for things like pointing towards the mouse. 76 and 75. The ask and answer blocks. This is the only way to get text input in Scratch, and it works very well. It looks nice, and it's super easy to use. 74. The thing of thing block. It's a bit of a confusing block, but it can be used in all sorts of different situations. In particular, it allows you to see the for the sprite only variables of other sprites. 73. Direction. It's a pretty straightforward block, so I don't really have anything to say about it. I use it all the time, so it's decently high on the list. 72. Join. This block allows you to combine text, and it's straightforward and easy to use. 71. Costume name slash number. I use this block a lot when working with clones. On top of that, it can be useful in animation. 70 through 68. The graphics effects blocks. I use the ghost and brightness effects in nearly every one of my projects. I still use the other effects, but not nearly as much. 67 through 65. The size blocks. These blocks are needed to change the size of a sprite, and I think they're used in most projects. 64. Pick random. This block allows you to randomize things in a scratch project, which is very important. I use it all the time. 63. Round. It's a bit more technical, but if you think about it, this block has so many uses. 62 and 61. Exposition and Y position. Like mouse X and mouse Y, these blocks aren't too interesting, but they're used in most projects. 60 and 59. Start sound and play sound. The start sound block is great for sound effects, while the play sound block works perfectly for things like background music. 58. Next costume. Although the switch costume block is better in my opinion, this one is perfect for animations and some other things. 57 through 49. The list blocks. Lists are incredibly useful, especially in more advanced projects. They allow you to make leaderboards, store data, and so much more. And the blocks involved are all helpful and easy to understand. 48. Point and Direction Although this block basically has the same purpose as the turn block, I think the point and direction block is easier to use. 47. Repeat until. This is the least useful loop, but I still use it in a lot of projects. 46. Wait until. The wait until block is great in countless situations, and it makes a lot of sense. 45. Repeat. This loop is easier to use than the repeat until loop, so because of that, I'm putting it higher. 44. Switch costume to. This block is a bit like the next costume block, but better. It gives you a lot more options than the next costume block. 43 through 41. The broadcast blocks. Broadcasts are used more in smaller projects, but I use them in big projects as well. They allow you to code lots of things in simpler ways, which is great. 40 through 32. The pen blocks. The pen extension is unique because Scratch is based on sprites, but the pen extension allows you to draw things on the screen instead. It makes lots of new projects possible, including 3D games. And it's also executed very well because each of the pen blocks is easy to understand and use. 31 through 28. Set X and Y and change X and Y. These blocks are way better than the move block most of the time because they allow you to move a sprite along the X and Y axes, which is so much easier to work with. 27 and 26. Hide and Show. These blocks are self-explanatory. They let you change the visibility of a sprite, which comes up all the time. 25 through 23. Greater than, less than, and equal. I use these to compare numbers in the majority of my projects. 22 through 20. And, or, and not. 
These are perfect for making scripts smaller and easier to read. 19 through 17. The Clone Blocks. I use some amount of clones in nearly all of my projects. They let you do lots of things that would be incredibly challenging without them. And although there are only three blocks, they all work great. 16. Go to XY. You'll need this block at least once in most projects, even if it's just moving a sprite to 0, zero at the beginning. 15 through 12. The Arithmetic Blocks. These are very simple, but they're needed basically everywhere. 11 through 9. The Variable Blocks. Variables are necessary in basically any game, from keeping score, to saving a value, to being used in custom blocks. Just imagine making a game without them. 8 and 7. Key press and mouse down. These blocks are both used to get user input, so they're in almost every game on Scratch. 6. Wait. This block allows you to put a delay in your script. The wait block is helpful in any kind of project, from games to animations. 5. Touching. This block is the best and easiest way to detect collision, or to detect if the mouse pointer is touching something. 4. The Forever Loop The Forever Loop keeps the script running indefinitely, which comes up constantly. 3 and 2. The If and If Else Loops These loops let you add any kind of logic to your Scratch project. Without them, most games wouldn't even be possible. And finally, number 1. When Green Flag Clicked you probably saw this one coming. The When Green Flag Collect block is at the start of every project, and everyone has used it and recognizes it, so I had to put it at number one. That's the end of my list! Tell me in the comments what your favorite block is! This video took me forever to make, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe for more Scratch videos like this! Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.